Hey, Wood Butchers. We're uh, working on a new project here, uh, the termite, because, uh, well, there's no school and nothing else going on. Uh, did an amazing thing today. She cleaned her room from stem to stern, and it looks awesome. But, you know, uh, she said she needed something for her room. I need a jewelry box. A jewelry box. So we're trying to make a project that uses minimal materials. We don't want to buy anything because, you know, things are a little tight right now. So we sat out here for probably about half an hour trying to figure things out. Her idea was to take some of this wood that I milled up and just make little boxes and stuff like that. But I thought, that's ah, going to take an awful long time. And I made her a little bandsaw box before, which she really likes. So we're going to make a... Bandsaw jewelry box. Out of... I have some scraps of, of fir plywood. So I got one, two, three, four, five. I might even make a sixth layer. And then we have the nice um, milled... I sanded it. <laughs> the milled cedar that she sanded. Uh, this was for uh, earmarked for another project, but... Uh, it never came to fruition because she didn't want it, so that's okay. It, it, it's actually coming in good use now. So we're going to put the cedar on the front, uh, just a thin veneer. And this actually gives me a chance to work on veneering because uh, i got a plan for that for a, another build. And uh, we're going to make, make the base out of this. And then we'll use our good old 18BX somewhere over there. And uh, the termite is going to make herself a bandsaw box. So we're going to mill this up so it's all one piece, and we're going to glue it up. And uh, then we'll work from there. Anyways, this is uh, this is a termite's first official YouTube project. Oh my goodness, what an oops! Uh, quick little update here. Just remember when you're doing the laminations for the uh, bandsaw box, um, these aren't going to line up. So I had to kind of use some clamps on the edges and the sides to kind of get it going. And a couple wax with a rubber mallet. <coughs> Use a glue that doesn't set up very fast. I'm using some, uh, what is this? Oh yeah, uh, Gorilla Glue, wood glue. Uh, it's a bit old, I've had to thin it out a little bit. Um, whoops, that's a little thick yet. So <clears throat> let me fix this up and uh, we're gonna get this uh, clamped up better. All right, here we go. So that's a little bit better. And now that I got it mostly straightened out, nothing that I'll, a couple seconds on the chop saw or uh, belt sander or something i'll figure it out so i have all these quick 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 grip clamps if you look at one of my earlier videos uh, i did look, looked at all the different clamping forces not the greatest in the world but i figure ah this many and i got some glue squeeze out uh, there we go uh, so i'm happy with that uh, i don't do crazy on the glue uh, i don't believe that you need to have enough squeezing out that you can kill a small uh, herd of animals with it Never had a glue joint come apart. So now another little trip uh, tip is if you're doing these clamps and your hands are getting tired, what you can do you can use a clamp to help you clamp. So uh, I do that sometimes when I'm having a little bit of issues or our hands are fatigued or I'm just suffering from a little bit of old man syndrome. So get a little clamp down. And you can just cinch up every little one just a little bit tighter without killing yourself. And when you have this many clamps all together, there's no way you're going to get a big, thick, beefy hand in there to operate the handle. Anyways, uh, we'll check this out in the morning. All right, so uh, Termite uh, just went to town on the big block of wood and got rid of all the clamps. Turned out really good. It's really solid, nice and flat. Um, you know, we got, uh, again, I use different clamps. I don't know what the heck's going on with these uh, little stains. I'm, I'm kind of confused there. Uh, anyway, so it's glued up, feeling good. Uh, probably a little sanding to make it nice and happy. I uh, got a little bit of, yeah, no, the edges are good. So you probably saw this white stuff. This is just parchment paper that uh, you'd use in the kitchen. I like using this when I'm doing glue up because glue does not stick to it. Um, so it's really easy to uh, peel off. Okay, uh, it just pulls right off, uh, really simple. Uh, so I like using that instead of having glue all over the place and then I gotta just throw this out. Um, so our next thing is to uh, square up the block and then we're gonna work on our design for all the different uh, uh, drawers. 
we got one big drawer that's going to be on this side for chains and then uh, three or four, probably four smaller doors, uh, drawers on this side uh, for the uh, you know miscellaneous rings and other little things like that. Anyways, we'll get Alrighty, to it. We got the blank all finished out. Uh, a little run through the bandsaw, a little bit of character on the edges and stuff like that. Nothing that won't stand out too much. Um, I, uh, the uh, termite and I both kind of like that look of the plywood. This is just some off-the-shelf uh, fur grade, you know, sheathing grade plywood. Um, so we, we did the layout at the uh, on the front here. Uh, come on this way. So we have one big drawer that will pull out. Uh, it'll be split in the middle. And what will happen is uh, I'll, I'll mill, you'll, you'll see better, but I'll mill it out. Uh, so there would be a spline in the middle, uh, the front and the back, and some bottoms. And what that will allow us to do is to uh, make uh, necklaces hang on either side of the uh, door, drawer there. And then we equalized it out into one, two, three, four drawers. Um, now, one little tip that I always do, or one thing I do, is I don't know if you can see on my speed square. There we go. So I figured out all the measurements here, and then I just mark them on the speed square once I figured out all the different components. And then when I'm making my layout, all you do is you just line up the end of the speed square ruler, and then bang, 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 bang. And they're all in the same uh, line side to side, and I know exactly where to, to put my lines. So, I like to do it on, you can do a story stick or whatever, but these rulers are good because what happens is afterwards you come through with an eraser, erase these off, you're good to go for the next one. So, or leave them on there and confuse the jeevers out of yourself next time you try and do a project. So, all done up. Uh, we're done for tonight. Uh, I'm going to go in and just refresh my brain on how to do bandsaw boxes because I haven't done one in a while. Make sure I don't do anything goofy, but I'm pretty sure the order is going to be cutting the back off. Then we're going to cut... Uh, this side off and make cuts in here at the top and bottom. Uh, then glue the side back on, let that sit, cut one strip, let this drop out, uh, glue it back on, and then we're going to cut the next strip and then side, 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 all the, all the boxes on the here and glue it back on as the drops, boxes drop out. Because that'll just leave the uh, uh, little components here. Put it all together. And then one last one will be to finish off these side cuts here. Cut this off. Glue that back on. Once that's all done, I'll have an empty box here. Empty box here, 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 and here. We'll glue the back on. And then we'll start hollowing out the uh, each little drawer. I'm just in my head thinking. Then we have to cut the front of the drawer off. Hollow them out. Okay, I got the I got the I got the sense of what we're doing here. So, again, like I said, it's been a while since we've done that. So it's a little bit more complex than just a simple bandsaw box, which I used to whip off pretty quick. These are a little bit more complex. So let's work through this journey, and we'll make the uh, termite a nice little uh, jewelry box. Okay, wood butchers, it's a new morning. It's the termite and I out in the workshop. So we got the back cut off of the blank. Uh, we got the two sides cut off, and now I'm cutting out for the side drawers. So what I'm doing, again, maybe not the best, maybe it's good enough, uh, again, I'm okay with it, is I am very carefully lining up my scribe marks. I'm coming just a bit on the inside of the scribe marks, and I'm cutting the slots for the drawers. Uh, basically what I'm doing is just uh, lining it up, pushing it through on the on the fence and then pulling it back out. Um, and the termite is here in case I cut body parts off and, uh, and that type of thing. So that's what the sides look like. Um, both uh, done up, really kind of turned out good. Uh, so I'm just gonna run through a cut here while, the, while we uh, get our uh, portable uh, stands here set up, AKA the termite and hey. And uh, we're just going to cut one of these for you. Uh, actually, I'll show you two. Uh, I do one and then I move it over and I do the next one. Okay, here we go.
All right, so they're all cut out. I'm using a pretty big bandsaw blade, so it's probably not optimal, but I really don't want to have to change it over, and uh, I'm not big into changing blades. <laughs> so I got the, the cutouts pretty close, you know. Again, this is for, for a home project, just to keep working on my skills. So looked out pretty good. So now we're just going to do the glue up. Uh, being really careful not to get any glue sort of in the curves here so that we're able to pop this out afterwards or not have as much fuss or muss. So we're going to work on that and uh, get back to you. All right. So as per the mantra of every uh, amateur or accomplished woodworker, you can never have too many clamps. So I was just going to use my quick grip clamps. Yeah, those weren't holding very good and not very accurate. So I remember that I went out and bought a whole bunch of these parallel clamps. So I got them all set up. Thankfully, I even had one extra. Um, one little word to the wise. My mantra has always been buy big clamps because you can always, you, you can't add length, but you can only, you know, you, you only need as much as you have. Well, I almost ran out of room there. Uh, being in a frantic pitch of trying to get this thing uh, glued up and not thinking ahead very well and having my assembly tables all full of garbage. Um, yeah, uh, I kind of got halfway glued up on this side and then realized the clamps weren't working. So uh, this isn't perfect, and uh, but thankfully it just fits. Anyways, maybe there is an argument for slightly smaller clamps occasionally. I don't know. Uh, but it's glued up. We're going to let that sit for a few hours, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll cut off the uh, other parts and pop out the... Um, uh, the drawers. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and uh, we'll get that done and then we'll start working on some handle ideas. All right. All right. Uh, so the termite bailed on the project uh, as per the fickleness of uh, pre-teenage girls. That's okay. Uh, this was going to be her Christmas present. She didn't want it until <laughs> I explained what I could do and she said, oh yeah, I'd like something like that. So, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. So I noticed a, a, a bit of an issue. I, I did the final cuts. So these were done. I glued them back up. You know, nice little glue joints. You can't really see them. I think once I sand it out, it'll be good. The issue is when it comes to the middle spline. So when I was doing it, I ran into a small issue is that I cut the through holes here to a certain depth. But when I did it on the bandsaw, I did it freehanded. I used the fence. This was perfectly straight, but my layout was off. So what happened was these cuts actually went into the middle part. So I thought, oh, well, I have a giant belt sander. That's fine. Um, so I put it on the belt sander and then something weird happened. You can probably see it here. It sanded at the top and the bottom more than it sanded in the middle. And the reason for that is remember the way it does tracking is the wheel on the end, one end, has a bit of a, a shape like that. So it's a little bit, it's not perfectly round. And as you camber it this way and that way, it's going to tighten or loosen the belt on the top or the bottom, causing to either track up or down. So again, if it's moving out that way, it's gonna to wanna to move down. If it's moving out that way, it's gonna to wanna to move up. Okay, great. But what that does is it actually leaves some slack in the belt at the top part and the bottom part. So as I was sanding this, the slack part of the belt was actually riding up and just touching the very top of that, causing basically this kind of sanding to the unit. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. But what I did do to start compensating for that was I took it to the sander and I ran it over this edge. So I'm kind of hollowing out the center, which is fine because it'll be on the inside of the box. Nobody will see it. But at least this edge and this edge, imagine this is that piece of wood I have, this edge and this edge will be straighter and glue up a little bit more accurately than it should have. So again, this whole bandsaw box, this one, this kind of a complex one, we're doing multiple cuts. First time I've done something like this. The other ones I've done have all been single box drawers. Simple, easy things. Put a thin blade. I even use my little smaller bandsaw on that one. Little thin blade, rip it around. You know, 10 minutes, you got everything done. It's close enough. Once you glue it up, bunch of clamps, holds it all in place. 
a little bit more challenging. So again, couple ideas here, how I'm gonna work on it. I'll just keep sanding it down and I gotta tune that uh, sander up so it doesn't have much slack in those two areas. All right, I gotta admit, it's been a while since I've done a project this complex and uh, mostly I'm just butchering crap to make storage space or get things organized and that type of thing. So uh, I haven't done a lot of fine, uh, finer work in a while. So anyways, smart enough this time, I actually set up my clamps before I got everything sort of started to glue up so I don't make up a great big mistake like I did last time. Anyways, so I got everything set up. Thankfully, all the clamps fit within here. Some nice parallel clamps. Um, I figured out how to get some more length there. I just can't use the table saw until all this is done. So I got to go pick up some more wood for another project. Um, I have to... <clears throat> figure out a way to keep the uh, shop dog in the yard. We don't have a fence yet. Uh, I've used pallets and still fencing, but there's a spot that he can get through and I got to make a, a much more uh, sort of dog proof area for that. So that'll be another project as well. Um, anyways, let's do some glue up and let's see if I can uh, not completely uh, goof all this right, up. So it's all glued up, all, uh, all good to go. Um, yeah. This isn't good. Not happy with that. So that's going to have to be, I'll get some filler or something like that. Some glue and some uh, sawdust and squirt that in there. And then uh, this lined up okay. I'm off a little bit here. Dang it. Can't take it apart now. So anyways, live and learn. Again, that's why I do these things is so I can remember what I've done and what I haven't done right. So and hopefully you can learn from my uh, oopsies as well.